Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll take a look at a wind-loaded freestanding masonry wall design. When a horizontal wind force blows onto a vertical wall it causes bending. When a wall is built into a steel frame or is braced by perpendicular walls the wind load is supported by both horizontal and vertical spanning. Brickwork is stronger when spanning horizontally because of the interlocking of the bricks. Long walls without vertical supports, such as boundary walls must depend upon only the vertical bending strength of the masonry. Masonry structures can usually be assumed to support a small tensile stress, although a large portion of their lateral strength comes from the pre-stressing effect of self-weight. In other words, brickwork at a particular level in a wall is normally in compression because of the downward weight of the brickwork above that level. Structures which depend upon their own self-weight in this way is known as gravity structures. Brickwork is designed according to limit state principles, and consequently both the loads and material strengths must be subject to partial safety factors. For vertical spanning, the value of the characteristic tensile bending strength ranges between 0.2 and 0.7 newton per millimeter squared, depending upon the strength of the mortar and the type and absorbency of the masonry units. A typical value of tensile bending strength is 0.3 newton per millimeter squared. A situation where masonry has zero tensile strength occurs at most damp proof courses. A damp proof course, or DPC, is an impermeable waterproof layer, usually installed about 150 millimeters above ground level. The purpose of it is to stop water rising from the ground by capillary action. It usually takes the form of a thin plastic membrane, which cannot transmit tensile stresses. Because of these two cases tension and no tension, we need to develop two expressions for the maximum design bending moment that a masonry wall can support. Case 1 tension case. Where the use of a characteristic tensile bending stress is appropriate, we can use the following equation to derive an expression for the maximum design bending moment that a wall can support. Because some tension is allowed, the value of minimum stress is allowed to become negative, but must not exceed tensile bending strength divided by partial safety factor. Therefore, at the limiting case. By rearranging the equation, we get the maximum bending moment, where F is the design axial load in the wall. Case 2 No tension case. If, because of a DPC, the bending tension must be zero, we can use vertical equilibrium to determine the limiting design moment on a wall of thickness. Masonry has the characteristic compressive strength of FK. As a result, assume that, at the ultimate point of failure, the vertical force in the wall, F, is supported by a strip of material of width X which is at its maximum design compressive stress, which is equal to the characteristic compressive strength divided by the partial safety factor. For a unit length of wall. In vertical equilibrium, vertical force F equals the characteristic compressive strength divided by the partial safety factor multiplied by X. As a result, X equals vertical force F multiplied by the partial safety factor divided by characteristic compressive strength. The maximum moment is equal to the vertical force F multiplied by the lever arm, where the lever arm is equal to half the wall thickness minus half X. As a result, when x is substituted, the maximum moment is equal to the following. Let's look at the following example. A 1.8 meter high boundary wall is to be built out of facing bricks. It will have a plastic damp proof course 150 millimeters above ground level. Based on the following information, what is the required thickness of the wall? Characteristic tensile bending strength 0.3 newton per millimeter squared. Characteristic compressive strength 7.1 newton per millimeter squared. Characteristic wind load 0.5 kilonewton per meter squared. Unit weight of brickwork 22 kilonewton per meter cubed. Partial safety factor for material strength 3. First, we must determine the design loads. The design wind load is 1.5 times 0.5. This gives us a value of 0.75 kilonewton per meter squared. Design permanent action equals brickwork unit weight of 22 kilonewton per meter cubed multiplied by brick width 0.215 meters. This results in a value of 4.73 kilonewton per meter squared. 
Let's now conduct some analysis. Consider a 1 meter long wall. Maximum bending moment for a cantilever equals design wind load times wall height 1.8 squared divided by 2. This results in 1.215 kilonewton meter. We must also calculate the bending moment at DPC, which is equal to the design wind load multiplied by the wall height up to DPC 1.65 squared divided by 2. This gives us a value of 1.021 kilonewton meter. To design the wall, we must first check the no tension case at the DPC. Vertical force F equals wall self weight, which is 4.73 kN per meter squared times 1.65 meters, for a total of 7.8 kN. As a result, maximum moment equals wall self weight divided by 2 multiplied by wall thickness minus open bracket wall self weight times the partial safety factor close bracket divided by characteristic compressive strength 7.1 which should be converted to kilonewton per meter squared by multiplying 7.1 by 1000, which equals 7100. As a result, the maximum moment is equal to 3.9 wall thickness minus 0.129 kilonewton meter. Equate this with the moment at DPC level 1.021 kilonewton meter. Hence, T equals 0.265 meters. Consequently, the closest standard brick dimension above this thickness is needed. This is 327.5 mm. Finally, we will examine the tension case at the base of the wall. The vertical force F equals 4.73 times the wall height of 1.8 meters, giving us 8.51 kN. Maximum moment equals open bracket vertical force 8.51 divided by area which is 0.3275 meters times 1 meter, plus characteristic tensile bending strength 0.3, which should be multiplied by 1000 to convert to kilonewton per meter squared. Divided by the partial safety factor 3, close bracket, multiplied by the elastic section modulus 0.3275 squared, divided by 6. This results in a value of 2.25 kilonewton meter which is greater than 1.215 kilonewtons meter. As a result, use a 0.3275 mm thick wall. In practice, it would be more cost-effective to build a thinner wall, but to strengthen it with regular piers, say every 2 meters along its length. Thanks for watching. We hope you found some useful tips. Check out our website at structuralengineercalcs.com. Please like and subscribe, and let us know what would you like to see next. The Human Footprint is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. Stay safe. Goodbye, and see you soon.